So essentially, the lens replacement procedure is where a surgeon uh, removes the natural lens of the eye from within the eye and replaces the lens with an artificial lens, essentially. Now, as we all get older, the natural lens in the eye gets cloudy and it starts to affect the vision, and that's known as cataract. But it is possible to have the lens removed theoretically at any time uh, of one's life. Now, lens extraction may be reserved for patients who have very early cataract or simply want to change what we call their refraction, where they change the prescription uh, within their eyes. So the way it works is very, very similar to cataract surgery in the sense that patients have some local anesthetic, they come into an operating theatre uh, where the surgeon puts a clear drape over the side of the face, creating access to the eye. The eye is numbed using some local anesthetic drops or a small injection. And then after that, a tiny cut is made into the eye and the natural lens is extracted using an ultrasound probe. And that allows the natural lens to be broken up into very small fragments and taken out of the eye. After that's done, an artificial lens is then placed in the same place where the natural lens was. So that in a nutshell is how the lens replacement procedure works. So typically patients who are good candidates for lens replacement surgery are those who have what we call a stable prescription. So your prescription has been stable for a, a number of years, at least two to three years. Often patients who are over the age of 45 uh, is what I would recommend. So patients who may feel that they need to start having reading glasses. Uh, and generally, uh, patients who are willing or looking to try and alter their prescription and have an improvement in their prescription uh, are good candidates for, for lens replacement surgery. So um, to answer the first question about risks and benefits of lens replacement surgery, any operation carries risks. But fortunately, due to the advances in our technology, and safety, the risks are thankfully very low. Lens extraction or lens replacement surgery is very similar to cataract surgery. And so there are some small risks, which can I, I can summarize as firstly being infection. The risk is approximately one in 2000 cases, which is very rare, but can result in a severe infection in the eye. Fortunately, we give patients antibiotics both during the operation and after the operation. So that limits that, that risk. The other risk is that the natural clear lens or lens sits in a clear bag within the eye. Think of that bag as being a bit like cling film. So it's very, very thin. And, and as a consequence, there is a small risk that that clear bag can actually break or, or rupture during the process of extracting the lens. The risk of that happening is low. It's averaged at about two in 100 cases. So about 2% of cases that can actually happen. Now, the, ben the, the good news is that that can be dealt with swiftly at that time of surgery, but it sometimes does require a second procedure and the placement of an artificial lens in a slightly different position within the eye. But so it's a rare risk, but it's something that has to be obviously mentioned to, to patients. The third thing to consider is something that we call, as surgeons, we call refractive surprise. And that's where to try and calculate the new power or strength of the artificial lens that needs to go in the eye, we need to do a series of measurements before surgery to work out the precise lens that's personalized for an individual's eye. Now we, we base that on various formulae and once we put the lens in the eye, it gives what we call a prediction of what the prescription is likely to be. Now nowadays the formulas and the measurements are very, very um, accurate and can give a very close prediction to what is actually intended, but very, very occasionally, and this tends to apply more in patients who may be very, very long-sighted or very, very short-sighted, i.e. having extremes of prescription. Uh, it can result in a slight prediction error or refractive surprise. So those are the main groups of potential risks of, of surgery. The main benefits of lens extraction are the opportunity to dramatically improve one's vision and uh, no longer have that dependency, for example, on glasses, be that for distance, or for near work. And the great thing is nowadays, there are some excellent lens options for patients wishing to become spectacle independent, such as what we call multifocal lenses or extended depth of focus lenses. In terms of preparing for the procedure, 
generally we advise patients not to um, wear contact lenses for two weeks prior to having the measurements done because contact lenses can affect the, uh, the measurements on the surface of the eye. Um, but otherwise, they need to ten take their regular medications as normal. Um, and, and there may be some specific instructions in terms of preparation based upon the type of anesthetic that they may choose to have for their procedure. For example, if they're choosing to have general anesthetic, uh, we advise them not to eat or drink for uh, 12 hours before the procedure normally. Although that can vary from uh, site to site. But otherwise, it's just a question of uh, taking your regular medications, and of course, if the procedure is done under a local anaesthetic, there aren't any major specific uh, preparations required. One thing to bear in mind is on the day of surgery, when you come in to having uh, the procedure done on the eye, the eye is prepared just prior to entering the theatre by the use of eye drops to cause dilation of the pupil. Um, and there are different ways of doing that. Most commonly, surgeons use eye drops, but occasionally we may use a very tiny pellet that we insert underneath the eyelid and that causes the pupil to dilate in the same way. So lens replacement surgery can often take anything from between 10 to 20 minutes or so typically uh, for a surgeon to have the lens removed and a new lens put in place. In terms of what the process feels like, generally patients report the eye feeling very comfortable once the anesthetic is in place and Often the procedure is entirely pain-free other than the minor injection of anesthetic when it initially goes in. After the procedure, patients may often have a shield placed on the eye, which we advise patients to wear for the rest of the day and also for the next seven nights. That's really that because we don't want them to knock the eye or rub it at nighttime. Now, of course, because we're making very tiny incisions or tiny cuts into the eye, there are small risks of developing what we call grittiness or soreness in the eye in the first day or two after surgery. Coupled with uh, the lens being removed, there is a uh, risk of inflammation in the eye in which patients can often feel a little light sensitive. The eye can feel um, a little achy and it can be uh, gritty or watery. But the good news is those symptoms are very short lived and often settle within the first few days immediately after the procedure. We give patients eye drops to use for the procedure for a few weeks afterwards to make sure that firstly they don't develop an infection and also the inflammation subsides quickly. Yes, there are alternatives to uh, lens replacement surgery. The first thing, of course, is, is, is traditional methods or what we call more conservative methods, like just continuing to wear glasses or having optimization of their lenses, which may include very focal glasses or bifocal lenses. With that, there's have been advances in contact lens technology, so patients can use external contact lens wear, which again, uh, can provide uh, vision for different uh, distances. And then, of course, there's what we call laser eye surgery, which is where Rather than taking the natural lens of the eye away, we actually consider reshaping the cornea, which is the front window of the eye, to try and improve patient's vision for both near and distance. Not all patients are suitable candidates for laser eye surgery, and it is worthwhile bearing in mind that ultimately, as we all get older, the natural lens of the eye starts to get cloudy anyway. A final group is what we call intraocular contact lenses, and that's where patients may not wish to have their natural lens actually removed, but having an intraocular contact lens inserted on top of their natural lens. And that can also uh, and have a good effect at trying to change their prescription to the optimum level that they wish. Let me just finish here the recording.